But what we need to do now is go back to our scale or our ruler. We know that this mark here was uh, at scale was one inch. Well, by half scale, it's a half an inch. So again, I'll apply that same measurement over here to a half an inch. We'll make a mark, move my scale out of the way, take my 3060 and flip it opposite, and go up here, and I'll make this mark coming up there. Uh, now with that done, you're starting to kind of see the part starting to take shape. We know that this measurement right here on full scale was a half inch. Well, according to this, if it's half scale, it's going to be half of a half, which is a quarter of an inch. So, or 0.25, or one-fourth, or however which way you want to call it out. So I'll make that mark right there. I don't know if you can see that little dot there. Now, again, 3060 here, making sure we're flush to the edge of our T-square on our drawing board, and we'll come up here and make us a mark. Now, essentially, we're going to freestyle and move the T-square out of the way, and as, the old, as we say in the industry, we're going to connect the dots. So we'll come over here, we'll get to the vertexes of these uh, areas here we've drafted. I'll move to the side so I can see a little better myself, and I'll draft in this point right there. So there it is coming in, so you can see it. So there's that diagonal. I'm going to kind of go this way so I can see a little bit better, and I'll draft in this line here. I'm going to put that in kind of heavy, and I'll just come in and put that in. So now, I don't know if you can see it on the camera there, but it's starting to look like the parts that you can start to see it in 3D. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, let me reorient this drafting table here a little bit, drafting board. I'll come up here and I'll re uh, put my T-square back on the, uh, the drafting board here. I'll come back here and I'll draft this guy in like that. And I'll come in like this. And you see, I'm darkening up these lines. Okay. Uh, I try to get as many as I can before I have to flip my 3060 to the opposite way. So that means I got to come back here and get this line in. Let me get over here a little bit. Come down here like this. Get this guy in. And then we'll flip it over. Okay. Now, with this guy in, I'll come in here and I'll put this in. And as you can see, the parts appearing in 3D now. Now remember, mankind has invented a lot of things in this world. Airplanes, cars, atomic nuclear weapons, submarines, aircraft carriers, jets. The most powerful things we've ever invented were these three. These three things right here. And that's the ruler, the 3069, the T-square. Because everything we ever created in this world originally started from these three things right here. And if you know how to use these three things and you know how to use them right, you can basically draw anything. So one last line to mark up here, and it's this one right here on the very edge on the right-hand side. So now comes the eraser shield. The eraser shield protects the artwork that you've already got drawn and keeps it from being erased. So I'm going to put the eraser shield over this one draft line that I don't need, and I'm going to protect the good art behind it and erase that. So I'll come over here. Racer Shield is a good tool to have. I, I strongly recommend every designer and artist have them uh, have themselves in a Racer Shield at their beck and win because we're always drawing, we're always sketching, and we want to protect the good art that we've created and the good line work we've created. So I'm going to clean this up here and get that out. It's also good if you've got like an old horsehair brush or even a paintbrush for that matter that you can just take and sweep away any of the erasure uh, pieces that, that peel up. Now one thing to note about these erasers, you want to use a white eraser, a drafting or design eraser, because it doesn't leave a mark on the paper. So let's talk about paper for a minute. Uh, I'm a big fan of copy paper because it's inexpensive, and copy paper typically is used for laser printers, and laser printers are typically used for court and legal documents, and they're meant to last a long time. When I was in college 30 years ago, I did a lot of my design and sketch work on copy paper. And the paper still is in great shape, whereas my illustration board, uh, watercolor paper and all that, hasn't held up too good over the last 30 years. But copy paper, for whatever reason, is good paper to work with, it's inexpensive, and it's good for design. And in the industry today, in mechanical engineering and manufacturing, all drawings are saved as PDF files and printed on copy paper and then typically given out to the shop floor for a machine operator to tool up that part. So there you see it. The part's kind of cleaned up. We can actually come back and spend a little more time doing that. But we need to move on to dimensioning. I'll get one last little erasure here. 
and we are going to be in good shape to continue this uh, continue this uh, drawing here. Clean up those marks. Now I recommend that all my students take their drawings that they've done in manual method and scan them in and put them on a website for their portfolio. When in doing so, you can use Photoshop to clean up a lot of the marks and lines that are left in there from the scanning process. If you don't have Photoshop, I recommend a product called GIMP. It's a free download from the internet and you're going to be able to uh, continue that process as well even if you don't have the money to buy Photoshop. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify my designs for my, or simplify my drafting for my, for my uh, dimensions. I like to come about an eighth of an inch off the object line and not make as heavy a line, but to define my dimension line. On dimensions, clarity is very, very important. Um, and the designations of what uh, working units that you're working in is also equally important. Whether I'm working in metric, or I'm working in millimeters, or engineering tenth inch scale, or I'm working in whatever architectural scale that you may have to deal with. Okay, so I've gone ahead in this case, put that line in. I'm not too worried about the line quality at this point. I'm going to go ahead and draw across here a solid dimension string. The reason I like to use solid dimension strings is A, they're easier. B, they reproduce much better, and you don't lose a lot of the line quality when you're doing so. So I'm going to take my 3060, and since I don't have a template to draw in my uh, arrows, I'm just going to use my 3060 to draw in the uh, sides of my arrowheads. So I'll do that, and I'll turn this over, come back in here, and I'll draw that as well. Okay. So there's that top dimension for the front view of the part. I'm going to go ahead and write clearly five, and I'll use my double quote, inches. Now you can put I in if you need to, if that's what your design standards require at your uh, organization or company. But in our case here at Southeast High School in Bradenton, Florida, we're going to do that. Now, clean up these lines just a little bit. It's the beauty of working with the graphite pencil. You can always come back and fix lines that are broken if you get a decent uh, Erasure shield, you can clean up a lot of that stuff as well. And there you go. Okay, so that line looks pretty good. Let's fix this one vertical uh, on the uh, dimension string here, vertical line. I'll come off this a little bit, darken that up. And there we are. Okay, one last little cleanup on that. Okay, I like to work on the outside edges of my dimension so that it's easier to see. There's less confusion on my drawings, and it works out a lot better. I'll clean this up here. Now, got that in. Got that in over there. That looks pretty good. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and we're going to draft in um, this dimension right up here for one inch. Again, I like to keep my dimensions pretty much away from each other, so as you look at the part, you can see a little bit. Darken it that line a little bit. Come off here, up here like this, and go over here. Again, I like to work big for reproduction purposes. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my dimension at the top here for this one inch. Now, again, your scale may say half inch, and it may only measure out to um, uh, may only measure out to half an inch, uh, even though you declare one inch. You still need to go ahead and uh, draw it in as the correct dimension of one inch. Okay, again, using my 306090 to draw in my arrowheads. Put that in. Put this guy over. Okay, turn this guy over here. Oops, should have had it that way in the first place. Okay, no biggie. Okay, now I've got enough room in this indication here to go ahead and put the one inch right here. There's going to be areas that we won't have enough room to put that one inch. So I go ahead and put that in, and there you see it, and uh, we know what that dimension is now. All right, with that done, I'm going to go ahead and use my eraser shield to get rid of this line here. And got that out of the way, and I'm going to use this area here to create the thickness of the part. 
Remember one very important thing about design and drafting. You don't want to repeat a dimension because it typically triggers a reaction that, uh, or, or a question in some cases, in a lot most cases, that you're trying to define, if you repeat a dimension, you're trying to define another feature. Well, a manufacturing engineer or a person in another country will see two of the same dimensions. He thinks you're probably trying to do another part altogether or another feature on that part. So never repeat a dimension unless you declare it a note on the drawing otherwise. Okay. Another thing that most people don't do is they don't go ahead and dimension anything on the isometric. It can be done. I've seen it done before. And it was done in cases where you could not orthographically in the top front right view define a feature. So they would come in or people would come in. I'll put this over. Would come in and dimension a specific note or, or item on an isometric projection because they couldn't define it otherwise. Those are rare cases though. Okay, so there's that dimension and that's going to be one and one half inches. Okay, now with that done, I'll come down here to this part of the part and I'm going to go ahead and on this side of the drawing, I'm going to come down here to the left of the part, I'll come off here and I'll draw me another area for my dimension stream. I'll darken up this one extension line that we use to draw the front view and we'll put that in as well. So we'll grab the 306090 again and we'll come in and we'll put this guy in. Okay, come across there. You know, one of the things I teach at my high school is I teach CAD software. I teach um, Autodesk software. I teach uh, SolidWorks software from Dassault Systems. And I teach CAD. I've been doing CAD since 1977. And the thing that's very important to note is that manual drafting, as you see we're doing here, is very important. You can't always take a CAD system to a job site or to sit and talk with a client or a customer. It's just not practical. And sometimes you can't even read the screen on a CAD system if you're at a job site. So that's why the drafting skills are important. It's also important to understand the value of the software that you're using with CAD when you learn how to manually draft. And it also, for students, young people, it garners a lot more respect from engineering managers, professors, and manufacturing uh, uh, specialists, machinists, if you can draft manually. They'll respect you more and they'll have a lot more, uh, and you'll understand a lot more where they're coming from as well. So now what we need to do is come down here and draft this one feature on the right view here of the part. This one small uh, half inch feature, or as we measured it and designed it, quarter inch feature. Now this is where the dimension is going to get a little different. On this one here, I'm not going to put the text right in here of the, uh, the number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line on the top and the bottom of that, of that feature there. I'll come over here, as you see, and I'll put this guy in there, put it in here. that in. I'll do a little dog leg off to the uh, right of this and I'll designate this as a half inch. Try to be consistent with your lettering and we're almost complete with this drawing. So this drawing here is something that can be used by a lot of people. Uh, it can be sent all over the world and now that it's in uh, it's done right here it's a it's a drawing that is pretty much following most of the drafting standards that a lot of companies and corporations uh, do. And let me go ahead and get my pencil here and I'll darken up this one edge. You can always come back and fix things when you're working in pencil. And in this case, we're going to fix the edge of the drawing, as you see here, and darken that up. But and we'll fix a few pieces up there. And I'll go ahead and take care of this uh, one mark over here and clean this up. So there you have it, a orthographic projected drawing. I'll go ahead and turn this around so you can see it clear on the camera and of what we've drafted here today. And 
And I always strive to try to get better with my own drafting. And I always see a little feature here or there that I want to clean up, a little line that may not be working the way I want, and take care of that. And then when you scan it and put it on your website, it'll look a lot better. So you can see I changed the dimensions a little bit, but essentially we've got a very high quality drawing that we can now feel confident that we can send out into the field and do something with. This is orthographic and isometric projection, again, with a 30-60-90, a scale, and a T-square, and some of the most basic drafting tools that anybody can get at their disposal. I appreciate your time, and I hope this benefits you greatly.